In this lesson, we'll work on making the component tray mounting points. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to capture position, create a projected sketch, and create construction geometry. With most of our components inserted into our design, it's now time to start thinking about how they're all going to be held in place. I want to start by showing all four DYS motors and props. As we look at this from the front, again, this is the rough location of all the components. We're going to be moving them around a bit more when we start to design the tray. But as we look at this, we have our flight controller, we have our power distribution board, we have our batteries, we have the controller receiver, and we have two ESCs. And ultimately, we're going to have four, two on the other side. What I want to talk about is how we're going to go about the process of mounting these. In general, when you start a new design or you make something like this, you're going to run into an issue where you make a design, you print it, and then you start to figure out things that work well or don't work well for whatever you're designing. Now that's the case with every design. There's an iterative process that has to be gone through in order to find out these things. Now in our case, we don't really have that luxury because we're going through the design process in sort of a one-off fashion. So I know from past experience that making this body all one piece, one solid piece, does work in the real world, but it makes the assembly process quite a bit more difficult. And it makes addressing problems with components or issues with wiring or even replacing components very difficult. So the way that we want to approach this problem is to create a scenario where we can remove the tray that holds all the components, or most of the components, I should say. Now we will have a camera that's going to be located on the front, which is this area right here, and we will have the transmitter for the video signal located on the back. Now this means that this component right here that receives the signal from the, the ground station or the controller is going to have to move around a little bit. But what we want to focus on are different ways that we can mount a component tray that can hold all the things that we need to, not interfere with the propellers, and hopefully add a bit of structure to the device. So as I'm looking at this, I can see that the ESCs are going to take up a good bit of room. As I go to the front view, I can tell that they can move inward just a little bit. So I'm going to get started by moving them over. Now what you want to do is you want to select the components. Now in this case, as we look through the browser, we have various components and we have the DYS ESCs. I'm going to control select both of them and simply just move them around. Now the reason we can do this is because they're not grounded in 3D space. Once they're in a location that is a little bit more out of the way, I'm going to use the capture position option. So they're not fixed in space, they're still able to float around as needed, and I can revert back if I accidentally move them or if I'm just playing around with their positioning. I'm going to revert back to that battery position and we're going to focus specifically on mounting points for our component tray. So as we look at this from the bottom, we note that the propellers are going to be spinning around. And if we take a look at just one of the propellers and we turn back on the prop path, you can see where the prop path is. And ultimately we're going to go back and we're going to add some more structure in this area. So it looks like we can create a mounting point uh, maybe over in this corner right here. It could add some additional structure. So we'd be tying in from this point, coming over to this point. And then we need to figure out places that we can mount internally on this body here. And it looks like maybe in this intersection point will, will give us a bit of structure and it'll help strengthen things up. And that'll tie in over here as well. Now remember we're working totally off symmetry. So the only thing we need to do is model two of those points and one here we can mirror forward and one here we can mirror across and then we'll have all six of those mounting points. So now what we want to do is make sure that we activate the X star component. Now the X star component activation is going to be important so that any sketches or features we create are internal to that component. If we start creating them at the top level then sketches will be created in the X star file, the V35 file, and then we won't have them located internally to this X star component. The next thing that we want to do again is figure out those locations. Now we have these smaller batteries and if you do remember I did talk about the fact that we wanted to keep it flexible so that we could use bigger batteries as needed. 
Now this is an area where we're going to have to decide what's important. Now in our case, the component tray mounting locations, uh, for instance in this point here and this point here, doesn't necessarily have to be below the battery. Right? The batteries can mount on the external portion of this case, and the case can just hold things like the power distribution board, the ESCs, the flight controller, and the, uh, the receiver from the controller. So keep that in mind that as we're looking at this in 2D, it doesn't necessarily limit the location of the batteries or the size of the batteries. We can still have the freedom to make those a little bit bigger or smaller as needed. So we're going to carry on with these locations. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I am looking at these locations from a symmetric point of view. And what I mean by that is I want to hide some of these things. I want to hide the batteries. So I'm going to hide the Turnigy batteries. I'm going to hide the ESCs uh, so that way I'm not obscuring anything. And I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to project. Now this automatically says, hey, you need to be in a sketch in order to make this work. So we're going to use the top plane, which is the XZ plane, to start our sketch. And we want to start projecting some geometry. Now I'm going to bring in these filleted corners here. And I'm also going to come over here and I want to bring in these filleted corners as well. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And then using the line tool, I'm going to go from the midpoints or the endpoints. It really just depends on the geometry that you're working with. And I'm going to create some structure. Now each of these lines we can hit X on the keyboard or we can use these construction option in, this, in the sketch palette. And that way we have a construction line. And the reason that we did this is because we hit C on the keyboard and we can draw a circle at that center point. Now one thing we can also do, I'm going to hit escape and I'll show you here that if we hit C again and we draw the circle that's not snapped to the midpoint of that line. Now with the circle drawn on this line, not snapped to the midpoint, we can make it coincident with this endpoint. And we can also give it a relation with this arc. Now you'll notice in this specific instance, it doesn't give us a tangency option. Now what that's telling me is that this is not a true arc and that its converted entity is not able to have that relation. And that's okay for us because we can actually just increase this size until it's roughly the right size and you'll notice that we're almost touching. And what we're actually going to end up doing is we're going to take this circle and we're going to offset it a bit larger so that we intersect with all of these ribs. So at this point it looks like it's uh, fairly close to touching. I'm going to hit D on the keyboard and I'm going to give this a 9.75 millimeter diameter and it looks like it's about fairly close to touching those. Now I want to take this and I want to offset it using my sketch offset option and you can also use the sketch drop down and go to offset or you can hit O on the keyboard. We're going to take this and we're going to offset it outward two millimeters and this will take us right up to this edge and right up to here. Now because that could potentially cause problems if the external fillet is a different size, we're going to limit that just a little bit by going to 1.75 and saying OK. Now it's also OK because this internal edge, I'm going to hit X and make it construction, and what we're doing is we're creating a solid boss there. Now I'm going to do this in this area as well using the same type of geometry. So I'm going to draw some lines going from here to here, then I'm going to come into this point and draw a line. And you notice that this one's underdefined because it's not directly snapping to a midpoint. What we can do to get around that is draw a construction line from here to here and give us another reference. And you'll notice that this isn't going to provide a nice perpendicular reference either. So I'm going to delete that line and delete this line. And we're going to see if we can snap to a center point over here. And again, it's not giving us that great reference. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down from this midpoint I'm going to draw a line from here to this wall and from here to this wall. I'm going to make these two lines collinear. I'm going to make them perpendicular with this line. And then this will start to, to build that structure and give me that reference I need. So you notice that as I move this around, that each of those lines changes in length. And what I can do is I can come down with the equal relation. And I can make this one and this one equal. And this gives me a pretty good structure. 
So now I'm going to take each of these lines, I'm going to hit X on the keyboard, and I'm going to convert them to construction. Now at some point in time, the constraints on the screen are going to start to get in your way. So I like to turn those off from time to time just to make sure the geometry that I'm working with is converted to construction. Then again, we're going to hit C on the keyboard, we're going to draw a circle. And we want to make sure that we have this geometry in here that is approximately touching those points. And then I'm going to add a dimension to it, in this case 15.5. We're going to use a sketch offset. And we're going to go out 1.5 millimeters. And in this case, you notice that 1.5 is actually overlapping here. So I'm just going to simply use 1.0. And we're going to say OK. Go ahead and make that internal one for construction, and we can stop the sketch. So now what we've done is we've laid out the locations, the starting point for our mounts. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and save our file, and then we can move on to our next step.